But first this evening, change of course is an essential part of life. And in the past few decades, the rate of change has been quite dramatic. Here in the industrialized West, that change has meant looking increasingly to technology and away from people to produce goods and services. The same has been true in agriculture, where these days astonishing machinery can do as much work or more as it might have taken perhaps 20 men to do at the turn of the century. So the old ways, you might think, are being forgotten, but not completely, as we've got the story of one man who still clings to the old ways in farming. For many, Clontibret is just a sign on the road from Castle Blaney to Monaghan. Clontibret is like a thousand other Irish parishes. It's got a couple of churches, there's a guard station, and of course, there are a few pubs. It's a rural parish where farming is the main occupation and football and hurling are the main sports. It's also where Benny Moan lives, a man who refuses to abandon the old ways, indeed, a man who's never tried the new ways. Benny farms 40 acres in Clontibret. He uses traditional farming methods and he says his neighbours just accept that. Ah, oh, they, they, they seem to be happy enough with it. Nobody ever, nobody ever said like that they'd round me up and close me up for, you know. They just, they just know that I do it this way and they take it for granted, you know. The only mechanical noise in this field is the rhythmic whir of the bow spreading the grass seed. And that's certainly not loud enough to drown out the sound of the May bird song. There's a rhythm to the bow and a rhythm to the walk and real contact with the earth. At the field end, the marker is moved. The measured walking begins again. You see, normally you used to have somebody carrying the seed to you when there was, when there was help about, but... That seems to be gone, and the children were all small here just for who could get doing it, you know, to get a day off school. At the midpoint of the field, he stops for more seed, then moves on again, with the steady tread developed from over 40 years of practice, spreading the seed that will bring new green life to this brown Monaghan earth. It's very satisfying, I mean, you're, you're getting the job done and getting, the, getting it done to your satisfaction, that's the whole good of it, like. Benny Moan had 10 acres of grass seed to sow this year. He did it in about seven days. Grass seed is easier to sow than oats or barley. You see the numbers here, one, two, three, four. And it, it, about four is the setting for sowing grass seed, what we are doing now. But when you're sowing oats or barley, you go to seven. This year he got a neighbour with a tractor to sow his oats. Everything else he's done himself and that included the ploughing back in March. Go on out, Mayor. Go on out, Nay. Go on out. Good. Nancy, go out. Come on out. Good. Oh. There are about four acres in this field. It took about five days to plough. He claims that as a small farmer, to buy a tractor and all the associated machinery would be to burden himself with overheads. If you have the time, he says, horses can do the same job. I'm in the rep scheme, which is 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 a, is a bit of a boost to the to the to the to the to the kitty, you know. And uh, then I sell all the all the, the the stuff that I grow that I don't need myself, you know. And together with that and the area aid and that, it comes into reasonable reasonable profit. Add in the forestry work he gets with his horses and the contracts to break horses for others, and he says he has a living. There's certainly satisfaction in this life where your own strength is needed to keep the steel of the plough moving through the green earth 
and turning it into a wave of brown soil. The whole motion of ploughing becomes like an eastern mantra, an action that's repeated again and again and again. Ploughing down the hill and walking back up, with the birds welcoming the spring and the weak March sunshine projecting the horse's shadow ahead of their labour. Heavy physical work demands breaks both for man and horse, and the warmth of the kitchen is welcome after the chill of the field. Well, the ground is dried up now. Yes. Travel on it. The talk is of the land and its state. In farming, weather is always important. Theresa Mon says she understands her husband's fascination with horses. Circumstances contrive to bring him into contact with them at a very early age. His father died when he was very young, I think he was about 13. So he had to take over and then there was neighbours down here had horses and he worked with them. So he just got that liking from an early age, you know. Hey girls, Nelly, Nancy, Nelly, go on. Nelly. Preparing the field for sowing doesn't end with the ploughing. More work has to be done, more sweat expended. Working with horses takes knowledge and skill. It's not something you can just take up. So anyone interested in this sort of farming has to take time to learn how to do it. It'd be like a, a, a young fella going to school, you see. You'd have to get the teacher <laughs> for start off. And uh, it would, it'd just be like if there was somebody to show him and if he had the interest, he'd just come on to it the same as the horse, you know. Benny Moan loves his horses, and he says his horses love him. To Benny, working with a horse is a much more pleasant experience than working with a tractor. There's interaction with a horse. To him, they're like people. Each has its own peculiarity. Every horse has a different personality, each one of them. And it takes you a wee while just to be working with them and, and, and using a horse just to get to know his personality. You know, and what would... What would take effect on one horse wouldn't do on the next one, you know. And tell me, what is Nancy trying to do at the moment? She's just trying to steal Nelly's car, and that's just what's in her head. Simon's at Clydesdale. He's two. He was bred on this farm, and now he's being broken on it. He's already used to the harness. He's not so used to the road. And in the May evenings, Benny and Simon are a familiar sight in the lanes around Clontibret. Simon, come on. Go on. Go. Benny is introducing Simon to the mechanisation of the late 20th century and its accompanying noise. He says it has to be done cautiously. Go on, Simon. You just have to be extra careful and extra vigilant with them at this stage. Because uh, a mishap, they'd remember it the longest day they lived, if anything happened. By anything happening, he means being scared by a lorry or a car. Oh, hey, hey, Benny hey, Moan hey, says hey, different hey, horses take hey, different lengths hey, of time hey, to get used to hey, farm work, hey, and it's important hey, to introduce hey, them to it gradually. Hey, go on, go on, go on. A lot depends on the horse, and a lot depends on the man, you know. And... The best a man can meet an awkward horse, you know. But oh. generally speaking, it's not oh, a bit of bother oh, when you boy. have a wee bit of know-how and a bit of patience and a bit of kindness. It all seems to work in all right and works out. For the farmer, sowing is followed by harrowing. The May sunshine has dried the soil and man and horse between them leave the evidence of their passing in swirling brown clouds. In all sorts of farming, the weather is important, and is particularly so if you're doing it in the traditional way like Benny Moe, and needing time. He says the years have taught him how to tell when there's a change coming. I don't know why now, I just can't say to you that it's this thing or that thing, but I just know it, that there'll be a change coming, that it's either going to mend or break, you know. 
Today's weather is perfect and tomorrow's should be too. Benny Moan hopes so. There's a lot more work to do.